any game, there are traps. Hi there, traveler. You know, the things that seem good at first, but don't age well and make you feel stupid for using them in the first place? Well, Genshin is no different, and there are a lot of trap characters, and that is really bad when you have to save for months or spend hundreds of dollars just to get a single limited 5-star character. And that is precisely why in this video, I'm going to share with you the top characters that you need to get that will always make your account better. These characters will make the hardest content much easier, even trivializing it in some cases. As newer people are coming into the game and as we get more and more reruns, I want to make sure people know who the strongest picks for them are. Now some of you OG shark friends may realize that I posted a video on this topic over a year ago, and it's still the most viewed video on my channel to date. That video is still really good and relevant to this day, the points I made were valid, and it has held up over time. However, something has changed. And that is that there is more balance and variety in the game today, which means that fewer characters are must-pulls. But wait, isn't this video about the best characters I have to pull? Well, kind of. This video is about the best characters and the best character roles for you. What I'm going to do differently on this video compared to the original one is offer you options that will make your account way, way stronger no matter if you pull one option or another. So if there's an extremely strong character on this list but you don't like them, you'll have another option. And look for a special bonus at the end of the video that will bring this all together even more. But before we get into what specific characters will be best for you, let's talk about my criteria for what makes an outstanding character. It all comes down to how much value they give you for your Primo Gems. That means they require the least amount of Primo Gems and are the most effective at what they do. So no Constellation 6 characters with Refinement 5 weapons here. In fact, if a character really wants their signature 5 star weapon, they probably didn't even make this list. So what makes a character amazing for you and worth pulling? Here are my 5 criteria. Number 1. They must be good at Constellation 0. MiHoYo has had a history of making characters extremely good at Constellation 6, but recently they've also been trying to make them really good at Constellation 2 or Constellation 3. But for a character to make this list, they must be very good at Constellation 0. Which means that any character I talk about here is going to be one that only requires enough wishing to get a single copy of them. <laughs> Not uh, 7 copies like in the videos where you see people doing enormous damage with their whale characters. Next, after being good right as soon as you get them, these characters must be good at fulfilling one or multiple roles really, really well. There's a lot of characters with very specific or niche roles like Nilu, and while she's very good in a Bloom team, you pretty much have to use her in a Bloom team to get the full value out of her. Not only that, but most of the time you want to run her with Kakomi and Nahida, and that's already three limited five stars just to make one team and one character work. So even though a Nilu Bloom team can be extremely strong, I can't recommend it to people knowing that there's a bunch of limited five stars that you have to get to really make it work, and there's just so many hoops to jump through. Similarly, there are a ton of four star characters that are very specific and very niche, and they typically only work with a specific five star, or were at least designed to, so you can bet those characters aren't going to be on this list either. Sorry Goro, no matter how much you try to tempt us with Miss Hina, you ain't getting in. Nope. So the second criteria is that the character must be very good in one or often multiple roles, and they also must be able to fit in multiple different team compositions. Now we touched on this before, but in order to be the best value for your Primo Gems, the third criteria is that these characters must not need specific other characters on their team. I've already talked about how Nilu's playstyle forces you into a Bloom team if you want to maximize her potential, and that's just not fun or worthwhile for me. And when you pull a specific character that needs other specific characters to make them work, that's just MiHoYo selling you a problem to then later sell you a solution. Like how Apple removed the headphone jack on the iPhone, so now you can't plug in your headphones unless you buy the lightning to headphone jack adapter. So yeah, no iPhone dongle characters will make this list. The fourth criteria for what makes a character worth pulling is that they will not need any 5 star weapons. 5 star weapons generally make any character better, but they're very expensive and hard to come by. And certain characters like Zhao really really want a 5 star weapon because his 4 star weapon options are pretty limited. This criteria is on the list because there's characters that do extremely well with just 4 star weapons or even 3 star weapons in some cases. And it only makes sense that the fewer primo gems you have to spend to make a character good, the better they'll be. 
And the fifth and final criteria for this list is that these characters must be future proof and they should be able to bring a ton of value to your account whether you pull them tomorrow or six months from now. Unfortunately, a lot of characters in Genshin are very good at the start of the game but fall off super hard later. Characters like Chi Chi and Diluc were in the S++ tier when the game first launched and they're really strong when you first start an account. But as time goes on, their problems become more and more apparent. It's to the point where if people pull characters like these, it doesn't feel like it's anything special. It's just feels like they've wasted a bunch of wishes. And that is precisely the reason why I made this criterion. You can rest assured that any of the characters on this list will be good for literally years, and if you build them, they will pay dividends. In fact, I'm going to say that the characters I'm going to talk about in just a bit are going to be good forever, literally to the point until the Genshin servers get shut down. And we're all playing Zenless Genshin Star Rail Impact Zero Third in the year 2196. Now, unlike my previous video, I'm going to give you more options options for characters. I'll start with two characters that you should absolutely get, and then I'll give you specific roles with the best characters within those roles. That way you can pick and choose whichever ones you like the most. The first character you definitely need to go for that is absolutely worth it is Bennett. And to anyone who's played Genshin Impact for even a little while, it's no surprise that Bennett is on this list. Damage, attack buffing, energy generation, there basically isn't anything Bennett can't do. And not only is he versatile and able to do it all, but he can do it all really, really well. Bennett was so good that at a point, people were saying that they would give up some of their 5 stars just to have a second copy of Bennett so that they could run one version of Bennett on one side of the abyss and the other version on the other side. If you get a Bennett early on, know that he will be forever useful in Genshin Impact. Now the good news is we have a lot of other teams that don't need Bennett on their team, but they almost all benefit from having him. That's just because he consolidates so many really important roles in Genshin Impact. He generates a massive amount of pyro energy, he has a very short cooldown on his elemental skill, and he also consolidates healing, cleansing, and a ginormous attack buff. And a good thing to note about Bennett is that he appears every May and November in the Genshin Impact Star Glitter Shop, so even if he doesn't appear on a banner for a long time, you might be able to just straight up buy a copy of him with Star Glitter. So I definitely recommend going for Bennett because he is literally game changing. The next 4 star character on this list is Jing Cho. Our wet book nerd friend might not look like much at first, but anyone with Virgil's swords. is bound to be good. Jingcho is very good on his own, but he really makes other characters shine. In pretty much every single situation where you can use a Hydro character, Jingcho is like the number one choice. Pretty much every Pyro character wants him. He does great in Electro Charge and Freeze as well, but he's also incredible in Dendro teams. In fact, you get Shangling for free, and she is an absolutely top tier Pyro DPS, and you pair her with Xingqiu, and they work amazingly well together. So what makes Xingqiu really good? Well, it's his elemental bursts and the damage he deals from his rain swords, right? Well, yeah, but there's actually a lot more to it than that. Being able to use his elemental burst and then switch off field to different characters makes him so useful. And it's also the main reason why a character like Jingcho is often preferred over a character like Ayato, because even though Ayato is very good on his own, he has to be on field, where Jingcho can be off field. This enables Jingcho to be way more versatile than carries like Tartaglia or Ayato, who are very good on their own, but have to be on field to work. And not only does he work off field, but he applies a lot of hydro, often being enough to be the solo hydro character in an entire team to provide all the hydro for all your elemental reaction needs. If other characters in the game had the same elemental application as Jing Cho, you could basically pair any character with any other character and they would be extremely broken. Reactions would be going on non-stop and all you'd see on screen would be a bunch of pretty colored numbers. But since a lot of characters have very weak elemental application, especially off-field, that makes Jing Cho really stand out even more. And what's even better is, in addition to the major amounts of offensive utility he provides, he also has some defensive utility. He reduces the damage you take, 
He increases your resistance to interruption or getting knocked around, and he has some modest healing. And he can do all of this even when you have a different character on the field. And that's why Xingqiu is going to be one of the best characters in the entire game forever. Even 5-star characters like Yulan who are very similar to him don't offer the defensive utility that he does. He's just got so many good things going for him, and to top it off, you can even pick him up from the Star Glitter Shop in March and September, or from the annual Lantern Rite event which happens around Lunar New Year. Now Bennett and Xingqiu are characters you absolutely should pick up, but the next characters we're going to talk about are going to be in specific roles, and I'll give you options to pick from. This way you can pick and choose some of your favorite characters, but also know that you're getting some of the best ones in the entire game. The first role we're going to talk about is Animo Utility Supports. Animo has been the best element in Genshin Impact since the beginning, and it's only gotten stronger. But the key to unlocking the truly broken power of the Animo element lies in the Viridescent set and the characters that can best utilize that artifact set. And the three best characters to do that are Venti, Kazuha, and Sucrose. Now you only need one of these characters, but I would suggest getting two out of the three. Now if you really love the absurd power of the swirl reaction and the huge damage buff you can get from the Viridescent Artifact set, then go for two of them. And if you're unsure of which two to go for, I'll give you a quick rundown of each. At the beginning of the game, Venti was clearly the strongest character in the entire game. He was so brokenly OP, and he is still very, very strong. The only difference now is that there aren't as many enemies that he can completely suck up into his black hole of destruction. However, if you're fighting humanoid enemies like Treasure Hoarders or Eremites, or any other enemy that's relatively small and light like Hilly Churls or Slimes, he's basically an auto-win button. His elemental burst offers the strongest crowd control capabilities in the entire game. On top of that, it does crazy amounts of damage, it can infuse an element dealing additional elemental and swirl damage, and to top it off, he has a passive that refunds energy to the element infused within his burst. So if you just want to absolutely decimate smaller enemies, Venti is your bard. Just note that his crowd control capabilities don't work on heavier or larger enemies like Geovishaps or Ruin Guards unless they're frozen and his crowd control capabilities doesn't work at all against bosses. But the damage, the elemental resistance shred, the swirls, and his energy refund still works. The next option is Kazuha. Of the three Animo characters, Kazuha feels the most fun to play, and I think he gets really high marks with the entire Genshin community because he just is so fun. But in addition to being a very fun character to play, he is also incredibly strong. Kazuha provides good crowd control with his elemental skill that has a pretty short cooldown. But Kazuha's real power comes from his level 60 ascension passive. Whenever Kazuha triggers a swirl, he gains 0.04% elemental damage boost for your entire team based on the element he swirled, and that can stack with other elemental damage boosting effects. 0.04% doesn't seem like a lot, but most people build Kazuha full EM and they're able to achieve an up to 40% elemental damage boost from this passive. And if you couple that with Kazuha's already good damage multipliers on his skill and burst and general fun factor of playing where he gets to jump, pull enemies, and then slam back down into the ground and hit them really hard, it's easy to see why this is a fan favorite. So Kazuha is a really great jack-of-all-trades animo damage amplifier option because he doesn't provide as much crowd control as Venti and isn't quite the auto-win button, but his damage boosting capability is very helpful on bosses where crowd control is not something you're ever concerned about. And the final recommendation for the animo crowd control damage amplification support is Sucrose. Now when Kazuha came out, people made fun of him. They were like, lol, Kazuha is just a 5-star Sucrose. And the thing is, they weren't wrong. Kazuha is like a 5-star Sucrose, but he's also one of the best characters in the entire game. So really, the best way to think of Sucrose is that she is a 4-star Kazuha. She has good grouping capabilities, she can apply animo on every single hit, she can buff your team in multiple ways, and she's an amazing driver for elemental teams. But Sucrose is also a character that doesn't really come alive until later in the game. You need a 4-star Viridus and Venera set on Sucrose, and you need as much elemental mastery on her as possible. And it's very unlikely you're going to get that until AR45+, plus at a minimum. But when you do, the amount of damage and buffing Sucrose provides is so massive that it's not even worth leveling her talents. 
This sometimes goes unnoticed because swirls can't crit, and so the numbers that they generate don't pop up in the large text on screen. But what does pop up are tons and tons of numbers, especially with Sucrose's AoE potential at grouping capabilities. And while Venti and Kazwa can be better than Sucrose in certain situations, Sucrose can also be better than them. So if you get a copy of Sucrose, just know that she is a 4-star Kazwa, and she is definitely worth leveling up. And remember, you ideally want to go for two of the three characters, Venti, Kazuha, or Sucrose, but if you can only go for one, then use the character you have the most fun with, or use Sucrose if you get her before the five-star characters. The next characters on the list are the only ones that are the quote-unquote main DPS or on-field DPS. Sorry, Hu Tao, Zhongling is incredibly good and we get her for free. <laughs> and further apologies to Zhao, you and your teams are just too expensive to be on this list. This is my burden to carry. So who did make this list? The two very strong cryo ladies, Ganyu and Ayaka. Both of these characters are very strong on their own, and they don't really need the super in-demand supports like Bennett and Xing Cho. And that's because both of them can run very strong freeze teams with the Blizzard Strayer artifact set. The freeze reaction is already incredibly good because enemies that are frozen stay still and they don't hit you. This means that fighting even the most difficult enemies is super manageable because you can freeze them in place, make sure they don't move, and then group them together and deal tons and tons of damage to them. The other part that's really fun is as long as you're applying tons of cryo, which these characters do, you can apply a bunch of hydro as well and keep them permanently frozen. To top it off, the Blizzard Strayer Artifact set is super strong and basically allows you to build full crit damage and attack because you get so much crit rate from the 4-piece set. As far as which character to choose over Ayaka or Ganyu, it kind of depends on what you want more. Ayaka deals a massive amount of damage with her elemental burst, but there are a few conditions. Her burst lingers on field for several seconds, but there's no inherent crowd control ability. Which means that enemies can actually walk out of her elemental burst, and if they do that, you're losing out on about 50% of your total damage. But if they're frozen, they can't move. And that means that the enemies get the full force of her elemental burst, plus the Blizzard Strayer artifact set amplifying your crit rate so much that you can basically crit every one of her 18 hits, leading to literally hundreds of thousands of damage in just a couple seconds. And her special sprint and charge attack passive also let her apply tons of cryo to enemies. So a freeze team with Ayaka is incredibly strong, especially if you're concerned with fighting large single target enemies like bosses. But if you're more concerned with AoE, then Ganyu is a clear choice for you. Ganyu's charge shot is incredibly strong and basically has no conditions to be met other than you have to aim it, but it doesn't require any elemental energy, any special skill to enable it, you just have access to it all the time. But top that off with a really good elemental burst and the ability to run a Blizzard Strayer set and Ganyu just becomes an incredible AoE monster. And when you pair Ganyu's burst with Venti's burst, you'll get some of the most absurd damage you'll see in the entire game. You'll clear entire rooms in seconds. That being said, Ganyu does not do as well as her counterpart Ayaka for boss clearing, but when you're fighting multiple enemies, she becomes exponentially more valuable for every enemy you have to fight. So choose one of these incredibly strong cryo DPS characters, whichever one you like the most. Ayaka will do better against one or two enemies, whereas Ganyu does very good against three or more enemies. The next character role on the list is one that just came out, and honestly we don't have a lot of options here, but this character role is so powerful it is going to be very useful for anyone. And that is the Dendro Off-Field Damage or Elemental Enabler. Now we have a few Dendro characters in the game right now, but the only character that really fits this role well is Nahida. The reason is Nahida applies so much Dendro and she can do it all off field. Dendro is an extremely good element and it does very well with a plethora of its very special reactions, whether it's Bloom, Hyper Bloom, Spread, Aggravate, or even Burgeon. You can even run Freeze and Bloom teams with Dendro combined because Cryo and Dendro don't interact with each other, so the Freeze and and the bloom reactions end up being separated, which results in enemies being frozen and then exploded by dendro cores, dealing lots of damage and being very satisfying. Now Nahida is clearly the best dendro off-field damage dealer and support, and she probably will stay this way for a very long time. But that's not to say that other characters can't fulfill this role as well. 
For example, Hoyoverse will probably make Alhatham an on-field DPS, but if they made him like Xingqiu and gave him really good off-field Dendro damage and Dendro application, he could easily take this spot too. The Dendro element just opens up so many different possibilities that we never had before, so if you can get a very good off-field Dendro damage dealer, it will open up so many opportunities for you. And considering we have a plethora of new artifact sets that are really good for Dendro characters and Dendro teams overall, an off-field Dendro DPS and Elemental Enabler will be something that you will cherish for a long, long time. Now there's one more role that you should definitely keep your eye out to go for. This role was already really good and was considered S tier at the beginning of the game and has only gotten better over time. That is the strong off-field electro damage dealer and energy support. And that might seem like a lot, but it's basically Raiden and Fischl. Let's talk about Fischl first, because she was considered S tier at the beginning of the game, and she has only gotten better with Dendro reactions being introduced in patch 3.0. But it's not really Fischl that's the strong one, it's Oz, her elemental skill. And you can trigger Oz with both your elemental skill and elemental burst. And this is a super powerful and easy to use electro turret that shoots tons and tons of electro bullets, applying tons of electro element while also generating a ton of electro energy off field. And unlike the 5 star character Kakomi's jellyfish, you can actually reposition Oz so that he can stay in the fight longer and shoot more electro bird seed at enemies. And then he shoots even more electro with an AoE with Fischl's final ascension passive. What's even better is that between Fischl's skill and burst, Oz pretty much has 100% uptime on the field. And while Fischl was already an S tier character, without spread and aggravate, when you combine those reactions together she becomes even stronger. The next character in our strong electro off-field damage dealer and energy generator is Raiden. Raiden is an interesting character because she is very strong in her own rights, but you can also build her full EM and only use her off-field. That's because her skill lasts for 25 seconds, but it only has a 10 second cooldown, so it can be up all the time. And it deals a coordinated attack as electro damage about once every second and generates a good amount of energy particles as well. And in co-op, your teammates get this buff as well, even though the coordinated attack that they do is only 20% of the damage that yours is. This makes Raiden extremely good in Dendro teams like Hyper Bloom and Aggravate. Because her damage is very good, her energy regeneration for the team is very good, and unlike Fischl who has to rely on some random occurrences from her Ascension 4 passive to proc Hyper Bloom, Raiden's skill does her electro damage in a small AoE, allowing it to hit the Dendro cores and proc Hyper Bloom very easily. And even though Raiden is very, very powerful in this role, this was not how she was intended to be played. She was intended as an on-field damage dealer and for 7 seconds for you to unload a ton of damage. And you can very easily play her that way too. This playstyle uses an Emblem of the Severed Fate 4-piece artifact set and really maximizes on the amount of damage the Raiden Shogun can do. And when an artifact set like the Emblem of the Severed Fate set is considered one of the best artifact sets for a ton of characters, and it was specifically made for Raiden, you know that character is going to be good. Raiden has a very high cost elemental burst, being a 90 energy cost burst, which is the highest in the game to date. But she also deals more damage the more energy recharge she has, and if you couple that with the Emblem of the Severed Fate set, that makes her elemental burst damage deal even more damage. That mixed in with the fact that everything she does in her elemental burst state is considered elemental burst damage and not normal and charge attack damage, and everything just synergizes really, really well. And that's why Raiden made this list. She is incredibly strong on her own, but she also enables a ton of new teams. She's been a staple in one of the strongest and easiest to play teams in the game, the Raiden National, but she's also incredibly strong with a character like Nahida. And as we get more and better Dendro characters, Raiden's just gonna rise in value. So for your very strong off-field electro damage dealer and energy support, pick either Raiden or Fischl. You can pick both, but really you only need one of them. Fischl is more of your budget option, but she is far from budget damage. Not only is she super powerful, but you can actually guarantee yourself a copy of Fischl through the Paimon's Bargain Shop. Like Bennett and Xingqiu, you can purchase Fischl for 34 star glitter, and she is in the Paimon's Bargain Shop in the months of January and July. And if you want someone who is a really good carry and enables Hyper Bloom teams a little bit easier, you can go with Raiden. And that's it for the characters you should get in Genshin Impact that will be the best no matter what. 
But wait, there's one character that so many people mentioned on the last video that didn't make it into this list. And I read the comments and I cannot tell you how many people said that this character is someone you absolutely need. So if you want to leave a nice comment for the inundation of comments I'm getting that's saying I should have included this character, well, I would really appreciate that. And the character I'm talking about is the one that I use the most, and that is Zhongli. Zhongli is very, very good, and his shield is incredibly powerful, but he's really not a character you need. In fact, he is in his own separate tier that I'm going to call the Comfort Tier. This is a tier of characters that is not necessary for you to beat the game, but it just makes things feel better. Having a super strong shield, not taking damage, not worrying about enemies hitting you feels really good. I mean, I was running level 20 characters with a level 90 Zhongli for a couple months because his shield was so strong, none of the enemies could hurt me, and I did that to farm character friendship. But Zhongli will not make you beat the hardest content in the game. He is a win harder character, and what I mean by that is if you're already beating the game, he's just going to make you win harder. But if you're struggling with content and you're struggling to beat an enemy, he's not going to help you beat an enemy faster. Now if Genshin's combat focus was survival, then Zhongli would be an easy number one top tier character that would be must pull for everyone. But the combat system does not reward you for surviving as long as you can, it rewards you when you can complete the content as quickly as you can. But if the Genshin mechanics were different and you lost your resin if you failed a domain or bossed, Zhongli would be even more sought after than he is now. But that's not how the game works. You can retry as many times as you want until you feel you can't do something and there's no penalty for doing that. So for this reason, while Zhongli is very, very good, he's not a character that you absolutely need. And this is why I've made his own tier, the comfort tier. It's very nice to have Zhongli, he does make everything very comfortable, but is not an absolute necessity. However, if you just want to play to enjoy the game and aren't worried about doing very high level, very difficult content, then Zhongli is a very good pickup, and there's another character in the comfort tier that you may want to consider. If Zhongli isn't your style and you don't want to listen to an old man ramble about Osmanthus wine every four seconds, Osmanthus wine tastes the same as- SHUT UP! You might want to consider Kakomi. Again, Kakomi is far from a necessity, but she is very good and she makes the game super comfortable because she just heals so much, she can do it off-field, she's hydro and can enable freeze, there's a lot of advantages for Kakomi. Now if I had to start the game all over, I would put the comfort picks at a lower priority than some of the other characters on this list. That's because I want a 36 star of the Abyss every single time it comes out so I can get those extra primo gems to wish for even more characters. Which is another advantage to all of the characters on this list. Yes, all of them are very good at C0. All of them are very versatile and can be in a bunch of different teams and are really flexible characters. None of these characters need specific other characters to work well and to realize their potential. None of them need 5 star weapons and they're all going to be very good for a very long time to come. But you can also make multiple teams with all of these characters. You might never want to do the Abyss. You might find the challenge boring or just not want to get into the combat side of Genshin that hard. But if you ever decide you want to try it, you already have some really good characters that you can build really good teams around and it will make the Abyss so much easier. For example, Bennett and Kazuha are an extremely powerful pairing and you can put Zhongling in that team who you get for free and now you have one of the best pyro teams in the entire game. You can use Ayaka, Xingqiu, and Sucrose and have a very strong freeze team. Sucrose can group your enemies and shred the cryo resistance so Ayaka hits even harder. Xingqiu applies Hydro and has some interruption resistance and passive healing, and then Ayaka is free to unload her massive amount of cryo damage on the frozen enemies that can't move. And then we have a team with Nahida, or another future character that's like her, and Fischl or Raiden. And this team is already incredibly powerful. You could put almost any character on this team and it will be very, very strong. You could literally put Barbara on this team who has been a long time meme in Genshin Impact and the team would feel incredibly powerful still. So this gives you three really good team cores to build around, but you only need two teams for the Abyss. Why three? 
Well, one reason is that if you can make three really good teams, you can obviously make two really good teams. But the other reason is because you can counter anything the Abyss or the game throws at you. Sometimes you'll have to fight enemies like the Cryo Hypostasis or the Thunder Manifestation. These bosses are immune to Cryo and Electro respectively, so if you have a team that is focused on dealing that type of damage, you're not going to get anywhere. But with a third team in place, you can switch things around, substitute different characters, and that way you can tackle any of the hardest difficulties the game would throw at you. For example, one of the recent iterations of the Abyss was harder than any of the previous ones, and I ended up doing a Ganyu Kazua Bennett Shongling Reverse Melt Team and a Raiden Nahida Jingcho Toma Ration Hida Hyper Burgeon Team. It sounds like a complete mess, but it worked really well and it got me 36 stars in the Abyss and all those Primo Gems, so that's what I care about. That's why I made this video. I want you to have the most flexibility to do whatever you want in Genshin Impact. If you don't think you can do the Abyss, let me tell you that you're wrong. You definitely can do it. And if you ever need help, feel free to ask on Twitch or in Discord, which are linked in the description, or ask in the comments below. I want to help you the best I can because Genshin is very very good at making you think you need to spend a lot of money on the game to be good, and that is just not true. I love you, stay awesome, and if you need more help, check out the upcoming video that's been recommended to you. Make sure you're subbed with that bell on, and I'll see you in the next one.